Who becomes the next occupant of the White House? Trump or Biden? And what do Africans, especially Nigerians, stand to gain from either a Trump or Biden's victory? This is Plus Politics. I am Kayode Ladeinde. Welcome, this is Plus Politics. In the next 24 hours, an already divided America will be making its choice between Republican President Donald Trump and former Vice President Joe Biden with fraught political divides worsened by the worst public health crisis in a century, the COVID-19 crisis. With 9.28 million cases and 231,000 mortalities in the country alone. The United States is also facing a consequent economic slump that has cost millions of Americans their jobs and still unresolved reckoning over race and police brutality. Whether Trump gets to clinch a second term ticket to the White House or Biden gets the victory for the Democrats will only be determined in a couple of hours. Joining us to discuss this, we have uh, Aogo Obu here in our studio, a foreign affairs editor who is going to be telling us a, a deep perspective on these issues. And we're also being joined by our virtual guest, Emeka Eziakawa, is currently in Florida, United States. Good evening, Emeka. Uh, good evening. Uh, nice to be here. Thanks for inviting me. Sorry for saying good evening. You know, we are in the evening here, yeah, so I'm sure you are still very much in the morning. So good morning over to you. It's, uh, it's lunchtime for us. Exactly. And we have our Hobo here. Let me start with our here. Um, the election is here and now, and people are looking at um, what is going to determine the election. And... Um, it is very easy to mention the issue of coronavirus, how the government has handled it, how government has uh, treated the situation. Uh, it is shocking when we hear that some really believe in Trump's approach. But what is your observation so far, you know, covering the elections in the past and looking at how Americans think? Yeah, exactly. So we've... Um We've gone one full cycle, and full circle also too, because when I imagine uh, the countdown to the White House program, which I run, and uh, tomorrow it will be zero day <laughs> <laughs> exactly. to the election, and uh, Joe Biden and Donald Trump uh, face head to head, and we'll have to separate one from the other. I think the great thing is that no matter how you look at it, Donald Trump will not be campaigning again after this election. Exactly. Whether he wins or he loses in four years' time, he will not be campaigning. So I think... For the neutral observers, we can look, look at what's by the side and uh, try and look at what Trump's legacy on the campaign trail has been or uh, not been. But when, when we look at the real issues uh, of, of facing, you know, I've, I've heard from a number of people, interviews we've conducted with, um, with the congressmen in the United States, with African-Americans in the United States, with Africans in diaspora in the United States, uh, you, you, you tend to get the feeling that Many of them look at this issue, one with the coronavirus, which has been the defining event, if not for this century, at least for this year and maybe this decade, and how Donald Trump has handled the entire, you know, um, entire uh, coronavirus and how um, Joe Biden intends to deal with it. So those are, two, those are key areas. We can also look at um, race relations. You saw all the ugly scenes that happened after the, after. Uh, George Floyd was killed, a policeman kneeling on his knee, on his um, neck, cutting his breath after eight minutes. And those violent protests still going on in some parts of the United States, okay. as we speak, maybe at reduced um, numbers. But that's also a big uh, talking point. Uh, tied to that also is the economy. I've been following the Ipsos Reuters poll or the Gallup poll over and over again, seeing which of the issues... Um, may change, you know, before election then. Those okay. issues haven't changed. So you've raised three yeah. issues. I'm sure there are still yeah. more, but we'll right. come back to that. Let me quickly get um, Emeka's view on these. Uh, you are right there, and you know what the conversations are over there. Um, what is the relevance of how this administration has handled the issue of COVID 
And someone might say, what could be different if Biden were to be in power? Well, so um, your, your in-house guests um, did, did it quite appropriately. Um, the the COVID-19 is going to be front and center in uh, the results of this election. Uh, typically, the, the, the average U.S. election is, is, you know, based on a few things. You're, you're, you're either a Democrat or you're a Republican. If you're a Republican, you're going to vote one way when it comes to immigration issues, gun control, uh, taxes, abortion. Uh, Republicans will vote one way, Democrats will vote one way. Those are, I mean, they are all set. You can't, you can't sway any votes making those your talking points. So at the end of the day, uh, just a few items decide who becomes uh, president of the U.S. And mostly, most times, it's the economy. Um, you know, the, the confidence the candidates give people of their ability to handle the economy usually, you know, sways those guys that are in the middle, the so-called independents. Um, then you also have, you know, very critical issue that some candidates don't look at, voter turnout. You know, not averagely we have more Democrats, more registered Democrats than Republicans. America, but um, Republicans are known to actually do the voting. Right? Democrats don't come out to vote. So a lot of times for Democrats to win, the president, uh, the Democratic candidate has to make sure people turn out to vote. So voter turnout, the economy, and then uh, off hand off cuff issues like COVID, like healthcare, you know, things that are like the Iraq war, those kind of uh, once in a decade issues come up and those, those ones also sway election. For this particular election, it's COVID is front and center. Okay, uh, Amika, let me stay with you before I come back to how we go here. Um, some would say that uh, if Americans are traditionally loyal to their parties because you hear that I'm a Republican, I'm a Democrat, someone will say, then will anything change after four, four years? And that brings me to the undecided voters. What's the relevance of these undecided voters? We'll look at other factors like um, what is the performance of this current president? What's the performance of this person when he was the vice president? Do we have people who look at issues like this? Yes, I mean, they're, they're there. Uh, they might not be uh, a majority, of course. Uh, the majority of Americans are either Democrats or Republicans. Uh, they, they base their lineage on, on the, you know, whatever the parties preach, right? We well, have folks that are in the middle, and usually things like the economy, like I said earlier on, or an instance like COVID, where uh, the really the, the incumbent, has not shown to a majority of people that is able to handle it like this. So issues like that will, will sway votes, uh, especially the, with those people in the middle. But the core Democrats and core Republicans are always going to vote a party line um, in most cases. I say most cases because this election is actually the first time um, I've seen people from uh, one party publicly, and I'm talking higher ranking people, publicly come out and say they're voting the other way. Uh, and I'm talking Republicans. Okay, I'll, I'll thank you very much for that um, position. But let's look at it, Aogo. Um, I'm looking at history now. I'm looking at the contemporary history of American election where we, ha we hardly have an incumbent loses, except for, is it the Bush father now or the son? Yeah, it's Bush, where it was... Yes, um, and, um, quite, quite a number in this sense. So, exactly. So, what are we looking at? Um, the Republican definitely was, was stuck with Trump. That's part of the fact that he was considered as an outsider. It's not yeah. part of the establishment. With these, in any way, work against him. You remember the prediction four years ago, we were almost concluding that it was never going to be Trump. Yeah. I remember that you were, <laughs> you were one of the minority who yeah. said that Trump was going to win. So yeah. what's the feel like this time? Well, it, it's interesting when we consider Trump, Donald Trump, the president of the United States as an outsider. 
because um, I've been watching the campaign even up till this evening, you still get the feel he's an outsider, even though he is the president of the United States. Mm. He sort of loves this underdog, uh, me against them. You know, he's commander in chief, but uh, he doesn't seem to want to even ascribe some of the successes. I mean, it's not all been bad. I mean, I, I, you look at things like foreign policy, for example. He's made some great gains. Uh, you look at um, Africa-United States uh, relationship. Even though people would argue that many of these things have happened because of what Congress has done and some civil servants who have decided to make sure they make things work, irrespective of whether Donald Trump supports it or not. But it's his victory, nevertheless. So you think that some of those things that he's, he's made gains in, he'll talk about them. Instead, he's going against the grain, you know, uh, behaving like he was outside establishment, trying to capture Washington for the rest of the United States. And it's a strategy that worked for him four years ago, and it's a strategy he's trying to deploy this time this around. Time around. If it will work for him, I don't know, but a lot of analysts say he doesn't know any other way to fight his battles. He always will go in this sort of underdog uh, mentality and see if he can win. And you know, when you look at the last um, election, there were so many things that we don't have now. You have nearly 60, percent, almost 70 percent of the voters for 2016 election already casting their vote in those numbers. About, it's almost 95 or 100 million, most likely by election day tomorrow, who would have cast their votes, a million ballots, absentee ballots. So those, those are huge numbers already on the table. Uh, a friend of mine was joking with me and said, this election going to happen on the 3rd of November is going to be a mop-up election because you'll have less people having vote. But anyhow you look at it, you're going to have record numbers. And the thing uh, America talked about, whether or not um, you, there will be a difference. Because when the debates happened, the first debate happened, and already it was thought that anyone going to make up his mind whether they will go for Trump and Biden was going to be a small number, fraction. a small fraction. Most of them have already made up their mind. The chances that it will swing, um, you know, is neither there, which is why you saw uh, Trump and Biden focusing on the six um, swing states, you know, what they call the, in the, in the, in the Ross Belt area, many of those states where, um, incidentally, went towards Donald Trump uh, four years ago. Some of those states that are returning um, um, polls that are uh, swinging towards the Democratic Party, you know, like four years ago. So 2020, is an, it's an unusual year. So <laughs> you can't call it for anyone. Oh, usually it is. why you imagine someone like uh, uh, Joe, Biden, Joe Biden today. He's in um, Cleveland, Ohio. This is a predominantly Republican stronghold. And he said, well, he got calls from people saying that, come talk to some folks here. Maybe we could sway them. You know, so hmm. unusually, you, you probably would think it should be you know, in his stronghold, but he's still um, to go there and convince them. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to convince them okay. the final day. Emeka, maybe I should ask you more pointedly. I know you're an analyst, but uh, I have a feeling that the background check of you tells me that, um, okay, you can correct me, <laughs> that you're neither a Republican or a Democrat. But basically, uh, you saw this surprise for many African-Americans or many Africans there. We felt... Wow, this was shocking. From what we're seeing online polls, it was going to be Hillary Clinton. And lo and behold, we saw what happened, Kotsi Electoral College. What is the situation now? By now, are you also clear, like many people were shocked last four years? Yeah, so um, the Hillary's election is... Uh, it's a completely different scenario of what's going on today. Um, I think, I think, in my opinion, I think Hillary took a lot of things for granted. Um, Hillary did, didn't campaign in some key battleground states uh, like Michigan uh, because she thought it was, you know, it was household. Um, things were a little bit more stable or calm in the U.S. during that election. Completely different, different scenario today. Uh, we have the COVID, um, 231 people dead, 10 million infections, uh, no plan. As far as most Americans are, are concerned, there's still no plan to handle this thing. And you have the race relations last few months. I, I know uh, our guest mentioned it earlier. That that has injured a lot of people to come out of it. This is the first time uh, this many voter, many people come out of vote for prior to election. And right now, almost 100 million votes have already been cast. Uh, they have got so much passion today for various reasons why people want to exercise their rights to vote in this election. 
Um, it's 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 unprecedented. And I think it's gonna it's gonna favor the Democrats uh, because the, the usual challenge the Democrats have is getting people to come out and vote. That's normally the ID challenge. Okay. Um, you just mentioned some very important issues and uh, looking at this election, let's look at this cultural, the social cultural um, enclave, the bias that we have. You know, a lot of people make some sweeping assumptions that, oh, all Africans, Americans are definitely going to vote uh, Democrat, but we saw what Kanye West has done and we've seen some kind of things like these uh, from the way you've covered the elections in the past, that is not always like that. We have the evangelicals where you just say, oh, they are pro-Trump, you know. Then when you come to that general assumptions too, that when you are relating to the Republican, they are conservative, and when you are dealing with the Democrats, they are very liberal. Um, do we have a twist here, or is still the same thing and what factors would this play this time around? Yeah, you know, earlier we, we saw the, the, the picture of um, Barack Obama, what they call stomping for Joe Biden. You know, he was Biden's um, boss. Campaign <laughs> <laughs> and now he's ha having to go campaign for um, Biden, um, you know, on the, on the trail. And, and, the, and the idea is to see how they can get as many as possible, and get all the African-Americans traditionally who are Democrats uh, to go vote for Biden. What happened with Hillary Clinton, which Mecca did mention also too, was there were certain places that she didn't go. I mean, it was overconfidence and just assumed that this would happen. But you didn't have the entire crowd come out like they did come out during uh, Barack Obama's two terms in 2008 and 2012. So this time they're trying to make sure they get every single one on the same uh, page to come out. That's the African Americans. And um, very importantly also to the women, um, in almost all of the polls, um, Say for the last election where you had less number of African American, I think it was about 60, dropped from like 64 to 62 percent uh, African American women traditionally have voted more than the men. And um, that had to do a lot with um, what was going on with the, the Democratic Party where a, a lot of the black African Americans did side with um, Senator, um, um, with, with Senator, um, What's his name? You just skipped my mind now. Who, Is it the black the candidate? No, no, Senator, okay, Senator Bernie Sanders. Who, Sanders. Who, yeah, who, were, who were more favorable towards Bernie Sanders than Hillary Clinton. And they, they made sure they avoided that scenario where um, the disgruntled Democratic Party members would have said, oh, you went ahead and picked a candidate who was not popular with us. And they decided that they would uh, this time around forge together. So you had Bernie Sanders early in the campaign pulling out and then saying, go and support uh, Joe Biden. So the majority of the African-Americans uh, with the Democratic Party. And then something that got a lot of people thinking too is the evangelical twist to it. And it's a question many of them ask me that many of Donald Trump's supporters, even though they are not uh, eligible to vote, um, are in Nigeria, <laughs> West Africa. You see, remember the incident of the Nigerian mm. trained nurse from Cameroon who said she had. Uh, the hydroxychloroquine saga. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, so maybe because of his um, tendency, you remember him walking out of the White House with a Bible and, you know, standing in front of the old uh, church there uh, in, at, at, um, uh, in, 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 uh, in Washington, D.C., just beside the White House. So those sort of images sort of um, um, you know, resonates. Yes, mm -hmm. sentiments resonates a lot. But, but unfortunately, many of the um, Nigerians, so the rest of them in the United States, or even there here, don't necessarily cannot understand, <laughs> one cannot vote, and not even understand, understand the history of the black uh, American struggle, of the years they had to come through slavery and, you know, go through that route. So they're just maybe waking up now and then looking and assuming this is what it can. But, but nevertheless, I, I think that uh, Democrats are not taking this for granted okay. to, to imagine that uh, because blacks generally will vote for the Democratic Party, they just fold their hands and, and say, uh, it's honky door, everyone come and vote on, on election day. But, okay. Yeah. And Mika, let's stay on that. Uh, looking at these factors, you know, the pro the pro life campaign and some other factors that uh, Trump, you know, has going for him. And a lot of people have also described him as, um, oh, this guy speaks hard to this Muslim world and therefore this guy is very, very Christian in quotes. Uh, what's the feeler over there? I mean, if, um, if Nigerians in Nigeria vote, uh, Trump will win in the landslide, sure. Uh, but um, 
fortunately, they, they, they are not going to be uh, the, the average Nigerian who actually lives here uh, doesn't see things in the same lens as, as they see it. Uh, when you live here and you experience the daily um, life, the black man, it's, it's very difficult to, to make the assertions in the Nigerian platform and make it. Um, evangelicals typically, traditionally, have always been that's, that's, and it's usually boils you know, down to the abortion issue. But America has gone beyond that. America has gone beyond a lot of these um, front border issues. It's either you're going you, you're one way or you're the other way. It's, it's clear cut. Uh, the, the, the Republicans are always going to lean towards you know, abortion uh, issues, and tax, taxes, the gun control stuff. It's, it's divided. In, a, in this election, that's not going to be that's not going to be said. You know, there, there are other present um, there, are, there are issues that that people are going to look at. Um, like I said, uh, I think I think the whole thing played very well into, into Biden's hands. Uh, it's it's pretty easy to campaign in this election if you're a Democrat. A lot of talking points you can, you can pull out there. Uh, it's it's. It's gonna be it's gonna be close. Don't get me wrong. Uh, the, the the split between public all Republicans and all Democrats in America it's, it's pretty close. Especially when you consider that we're, we're doing the electoral vote thing. It's not it's not a popular vote. Uh, it's not a popular vote wins the election. So the electoral vote electoral vote uh, factor it's it's gonna be a close election. But um, so far I think it's gonna. It's gonna Sorry, I would like to hear that. Uh, just for record, I think the voice is a bit seizing. So it's largely going to be on which side now? I'm waiting for your prediction. Yeah, I'll tell you on uh, November 4th. How about that? <laughs> Thank you, Emika, for your time. Uh, I still have our go here, so I'm going to hand with you and thank you for your time. Thank you for taking time to talk about this. Uh, we'll keep our fingers crossed and probably we'll call you for post-election analysis to look at some of these factors you've mentioned, what really worked and the ones that didn't work. And uh, we'll, be, we'll be back again to compare notes. Thank you for your time. Thank you for having me, Kylie. Yeah. Care. Yeah, we'll take a short break. And when we come back, we'll be looking at what is in aid for Nigeria? Why are we talking about the U.S. presidential election? What do Africans stand to gain? That will be up for discussion after the break. Please don't go anywhere. <laughs>